SharePoint and OneDrive are a fantastic set of business collaboration tools that Microsoft has produced. It has the power to really transform a lot of businesses, help departments collaborate more uh, together, and work on docs you know, across the globe easily and in real time. Fantastic tools. However, the downside of them is that they have really been designed to favor business collaboration by default over security and kind of governance that you would want to have in place. So today, um, I'm going to talk to you about how to lock that down and what kind of controls you can do. Hey, everybody, I'm Doug Baker, and this is just to do the basics, securing your Microsoft 365 environment. Uh, three areas I really want to focus on today of locking down and controlling your SharePoint and OneDrive. So we're going to talk today about uh, default sharing, kind of all the options that I have for when your content is being sent out to the organization, how to put security controls around that. Second, we're going to talk about the overall security controls, the files in it. We really want to put malware scanning on uh, for your SharePoint and OneDrive. It's not on by default. It's kind of weird. Um, so, but we need to turn that on and make some adjustments there. And then finally, I want to talk to you about access controls, which is the ability for you to say, what time is it appropriate for your employee to access that on what computers and things of that nature? So we can definitely look at all of that. So that being said, let's get into it and let's look at all those options. All right, to start, we want to go into Admin Center and we're going to launch over here the SharePoint Admin Center. This is the place where all of the security controls in your environment for sure, or most of the security controls for your environment are going to be. The place that I would really recommend spending some time is these sharing controls here. This is where you're going to make a lot of your adjustments to your type of policies. So here is the kind of the big decisions that you as an organization need to make is this sliders here of what kind of sharing do you want to allow out of your environment one thing you'll notice is that sharepoint is the root for everything in your organization so you can go um you, you can go more permissive on sharepoint sites um, but you can never go less permissive on OneDrive sites. So it's kind of a strange uh, lockdown. And it's because OneDrive technically is backend is SharePoint, right? And so it kind of that's why this is locked down here. A lot of orgs I work with have uh, kind of go for the middle ground approach where it's new and existing guests can access things so you can share to external people. However, you know, it has to be named identities. And this can be a, you know, very common approach. I also see that admins are going to be inviting guests and other external people can access the SharePoint files, but the end user can't necessarily add anybody by default. And so you really need to come in here and have some decision and have some discussion with your org about, hey, what features do we need to take advantage of to help our business be better? If you find, and a lot of orgs do find, that they have to leave this uh, anonymous access available. Right. Maybe you're competing with um, like G Suite type solution where you need, you know, real time collaboration to be able to happen and be a, have the ability to have, you know, files externally exposed. And so sometimes you can lose the battle of, hey, yes, we would like to lock everything down, but we just can't do it because it's a business decision really at that point. Well, in that case, what I would really highly recommend doing is changing the default sharing options that you give out to people, All right? So one of the options that you, this is, should be the default that you'll see in your tenant is anyone with the link. So every time someone clicks hit shares, it defaults by to the anonymous link. And that is not, not the best. <laughs> um, so what I would really recommend if you get in the spot where it says, Hey, you know, the business needs this option. You can cut down on the amount of anonymous links that get shared out by your organization by switching, by simply changing the default option. And users are okay. Usually most of the time with, Oh, I need to share this with Doug. All right. Well, I'll just type in Doug's name and away that link will go. I need to show this with Jim externally and away that link will go. Simply by changing this option, it really does help lock down all of the sharing controls that your end users do. They'll just type someone's name out, hit send, and away they go. They still get the option that they can come in and change that link and explore it uh, and open up that sharing link uh, to make it anonymous. But this is a great way to start with locking that down. Additionally, if you do get that uh, authentication link, Remember, you can do more uh, controls in place to help secure it, right? You have a lot of various options under here of, you know, controlling access to this. So um, 
one of the ones you should probably definitely do if you have those anonymous sharing links is this expiration period for these files. You can actually come in and say, hey, you know, every 30 days that file is going to be deprecated. You know, that link is no longer going to work. And that can be a great solution to have in place. I've worked with orgs that, you know, have 500 different anonymous sharing links because, you know, they implemented SharePoint a long time ago and those links just sit there and, uh, you know, probably aren't being used, but it is an exposed gap in your environment. So having this expiration period can come in. Maybe it's 60 days, maybe it's 15, maybe it's seven. Whatever is appropriate for your org, you can come in and make that happen for that. Okay, so that's a good one to have in place if you're allowing anonymous links. You can also, of course, change the, you know, view versus edit option. I don't see a lot of orgs doing this because most of the time when we're doing collaboration, end users are expecting, hey, I need to share this with someone because they need to edit it, right? So that one I don't see as used much, but I would highly recommend adjusting this one if you could get stuck with using anonymous links, change the default sharing experience, and if you get stuck with anonymous links, uh, lock that down. A couple other controls in this center that you really should consider looking at is this one here. This guest users must sign in with the account that they were sent access to. This can be a double-edged sword. It can help increase the security, making sure that, yes, the person that accept the link and access the files is who they say they are. However, if you work with other orgs that, you know, their UPN doesn't always match their email address, this can cause some frustration for your end users. So definitely something worth considering. I would typically recommend orgs turn this on, um, but it's something that can cause some behavior issues, especially if you know, hey, our sister org, their UPNs don't match their email address. That would cause a problem. They can't accept the link because, you know, their, you know, uh, ID number, which is their UPN, doesn't actually work with that sign-in. So that's something you can consider there. Um, you also can change, um, you know, this one, all right? Uh, I would definitely turn this one off. Guests shouldn't be able to reshare items that they don't own. I don't like that having that on for your org. Um, and do you want people's guest access to automatically expire? Yeah, maybe that might be a good one also to consider. So those are the sharing controls that we really want to look at. Um, and hope those helps. Um, again, if I was going to, you know, say what, what should you do? What should the options be? I would really favor this type of lockdown here where turn off anonymous links. Most businesses don't mean it. Uh, and then come into this and change your default sharing option. Again, yeah, you have to do what, you know, your business requires. Uh, but that can be some great, great ways to mitigate those controls. Next, uh, next set of controls that we really want to look at implementing for um, your SharePoint and OneDrive is security controls. Uh, in here, uh, under admin and then security.microsoft.com, this is the primary place that I would recommend putting your security controls around SharePoint is. The biggest one that I really want to see you implement is um, malware scanning of OneDrive and files, right? Um, if you come down here, it's not on by default and you go to policies and rules and threat protections. This does require MDO plan one or two, um, but you'll come into the safe attachment files and you'll notice in their global settings, a turn on malware for SharePoint, OneDrive and Microsoft Teams. We really want this control on. If you have uh, security basics or um, security defaults, I believe this also will turn on for the end users, but this is a great way to start scanning files in your SharePoint and OneDrive, right? Um, it's kind of weird to kind of don't expect that this isn't uh, turned on by default, but it is a great thing that you can enable uh, and highly recommend it. So turn that on and this, kind of interesting uh, when you start looking at this. What is this default experience here? Well, the default experience for this is that end users can actually see it. will So if, if a OneDrive file is detected, it'll remove it from the computer that is on. If the malware is detected by OneDrive, it'll remove it from the computer and on and store it in OneDrive. You'll see in your SharePoint and OneDrive uh, folder, you know, like this ICAR test files that I'm showing, um, it'll show the file and kind of the, the, that, Hey, this has been detected. However, the end user has the default experience or the experience. They have the ability to download that malware back onto their computer if they want it. Now that, that is a strange choice. That is kind of the default experience and Microsoft would actually really recommend changing that. Uh, and so would I, right? So how do you do that? SharePoint and OneDrive has a set of features that you can actually 
disallow that infected file. It is available only via PowerShell, but I would highly recommend if you're going to turn on malware detection, turn off the ability for end users to download those files. They have to come now through you as an IT folk to get access to those downloads. Um, what does that look like from you? How do you do that? Well, it's just going to be the same as the Microsoft quarantine emails. So if you come back over to review and then quarantine, you'll see there is a files tab in here, and this should be all files detected as malware uh, in your Microsoft 365 environment. And in fact, here is an example of that it, uh, that you can take advantage of. Here we can see Jeff has this file that he is, you know, an ICAR test file, and we can come in and decide, yep, that's fine, that's safe, we did a review on it. Here, we'll release it. You can download it to do your inspection, take it to a third-party tools. Uh, you can block the sender, or you can just delete it from quarantine here. I like this view, it's nice because you can see all of this kind of data in here and really take advantage of it. So that's the security controls I would highly recommend putting into place. If you don't have MDO, um, you know, you, you really should look at getting some third party tools or getting, you know, some licenses for MDO uh, and Defender for Office uh, to access that and control it. Now, this isn't the only way that you can do malware scanning with Microsoft. If you have, uh, for instance, Defender for Cloud Apps, you can also come in and scan with malware with that. And so if you have both of them, I would highly recommend doing scans uh, with both of them. They're separate engines, uh, and so they might just be a layered approach to your security, but it's a good thing to think about. This, if you have Defender for Cloud Apps, it's not on by default, um, but it's pretty easy to enable. Just go into your policies and malware detection, and you can come in and enable it over here on the right-hand side. And you can notice, yep, same level of detections in my files. I have these five, you know, you know, ICR files that I've detected uh, in different mailboxes and or different OneDrive files, and they're available for me to quarantine action and, you know, take advantage of. One interesting thing, if you have Defender for Cloud Apps, Defender for Cloud Apps, that malware scanner can be used with third-party cloud. So if you have Box uh, or Dropbox, you can actually scan those solutions using Defender, which is pretty cool. So the final set of controls I want you to really look at when you're thinking about securing your SharePoint and OneDrive is access controls, controlling when and how end users access your SharePoint and OneDrive. If you're only relying on um, MFA, it's really easy for an end user that you know just might be not really caring or not really thinking about it to hit sync to OneDrive on your you know web view of your SharePoint and OneDrive and download all of the corporate issued files onto their personal device. So I really highly recommend putting in some controls for blocking that type of access. Um, also, you should block legacy off in your environment. You should block that all up. If you can't, obviously, you do have a SharePoint control that you can come in and just enable just for SharePoint. You can come into this and hit block, and this on the SharePoint backend will block apps that don't use modern auth, uh, aka MFA, um, to can access your environment. Obviously, work with your developer teams. If they have a script like an upload or you know a, a file that's doing continuous updates to your SharePoint, you want to have some can care before you implement something like this. Um, do some audit log checks. If you need to, uh, you can also do it via conditional access uh, and scope it to say, hey, just this IP address you know, is allowed to use uh, legacy auth. Um, so you have that option. Overall, though, to block the just hit the sync button from Microsoft, you can come into this unmanaged device section in your admin or SharePoint admin center, and you can hit uh, allow limited or web only access or block access on unmanaged device. What this is going to do is this is actually going to pre-create for you two sets of conditional access policies to control unmanaged devices. So. Um, let's go take a look at what they do when you create this. It, it comes into this and says, oh, it, this was created from the SharePoint Admin Center, and it's blocking all of this stuff. Targets all users in your org for, by default. Of course, if you needed to go and exclude that, you could. Um, but essentially how it works is it's targeting SharePoint, and then it's coming in and targeting your thick client apps. So that's the OneDrive sync client specifically um, in, you know, for OneDrive. But if you open this up and you target it instead, you know, say all of Office 365, it could target your Teams client, your Outlook client, and those type of other thick client or desktop clients. 
The control that Microsoft is putting in place and is recommending is require the device to be marked as compliant via Intune or require the device to be hybrid Azure AD joined. So coming from your Active Directory environment, syncing up to Office 365. And this is a great example of how you can put into place conditional access policies to really limit that control. So this is policy one. This is gonna be require, hey, if you're using that thick client, that browser or the, you know, the sync button or you know, things like that, it's gonna lock it down. It's gonna say, hey, you have to be coming from our corporate issue device. And this is a great one to really have in place, highly would recommend. The second one that we did because we picked on this uh, web access only, limited web access only, is it actually is gonna create a special SharePoint control. So what you'll see is again, targets all users and then the SharePoint app. And then specifically it's looking at the browser session in here. And it's not doing any additional grant controls. It's simply coming in and using app specific policies. So this exists for SharePoint and OneDrive, and it's gonna stop the end user from doing all of these default type controls. So um, like downloading, things like that. It'll put in that kind of advanced set of controls that you can use to do that. So that's a really cool option to do. Um, I, I like this set of controls. I would highly recommend it. However, I want you to think a little bit bigger picture with it. Um, you know, this is only affecting SharePoint and OneDrive. You should really think about all the other apps that you don't want people to access on their desktop clients or their personal clients. So, you know, this is targeting SharePoint, but think about Exchange. Should someone be able to just hit sign in to, you know, Outlook on their personal device and download their entire mailbox to, you know, your machine? I would highly recommend not allowing that, you know, same with teams, a lot of data and teams can be available. So um, really would love to see you expand that scope out and use a, a control to say, hey, overall, all desktop client apps, you know, we can come in and allow it. But then web view, yeah, we'll allow that, but but down, block or allow not downloading or on those on those kind of things. And so you can do that with conditional access. So think bigger picture with it. So overall, I hope this video helps you take advantage of some of the basic security controls that SharePoint and OneDrive has available to us. Um, it helps you lock down your environment a little bit more, a lot of different uh, gray area that you can do to make your adjustments. Um, hope this helps. And if you have questions, please reach out.